everybody, it's Penny Wayne from Kentucky Leather and Hides, and I just want to give you guys a little Leather 101 today, so you know what kind of leathers to pick out when you're going to do a project. All right, first thing is, if you're wanting to make any kind of belts or any kind of knife sheaths, you're going to want to use what we call vegetable tan leather, and vegetable tan comes in anywhere from like a two ounce, even a one ounce, up to a 13, 14 ounce. And the reason why they call it a vegetable tan leather is because it is made from all natural materials. Doesn't have any chemicals in it. So that means that you can dye it, you can tool it, you can stamp it, you can uh, mold it. It's a very good leather to do any kind of like knife sheaths, belts. It's a little bit stiffer. Uh, sometimes you're going to see some people may have some softer veg tan and what has happened there is they have broke the grain of the hide. That is what makes leather soft when they break the grain. So vegetable tan most of the time it'll come in like sides or double bends or shoulders but this will give you an idea of the length and the color and it's a natural color so you're going to be able to dye it and later on I'll give a little class on like uh, highlighting and dyeing and stamping um, and a lot of times too you'll hear the word harness leather harness leather also is veg tan but it's been sprayed spray dyed and it has a wax coat to it most of the time, harness leather is going to be a heavier leather. It's going to come into like a 10 to a 12 ounce. And when I'm talking about ounces, that means thickness of leather. So you'll see it in like a burgundy, a brown, a honey color, a black, but it'll have a wax finish on it. So, but any of this, you can use on any kind of knife sheaves, holsters, and... This is what I would use for knife sheaths or holsters and the reason why it doesn't have any chemicals in it because a lot of your other commercial hides, they're going to have chemicals in it, which is called a crown. So that acid can actually rust metal. Uh, there's little tricks to getting around that if you use uh, You can actually use Neatsfoot oil and dip your like knife sheath into a vat of neat's foot oil and let it soak also another thing you should know is when you're doing knife sheaves and holsters always oil your leather always 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 and the reason why is leather is skin and your skin gets dry so it needs oil to uh re relive it to, to 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 keep it going to keep it uh to keep it soft to keep it supple to keep it uh to keep it preserved so that's just an idea on some knife sheets and stuff on uh on doing that um anybody that's wanting to do like shooting bags uh good leathers i sell a lot of to people that are making shooting bags possible bags any kind of hunting pouches uh oil tan cowhide that works really good now oil tan is actually it's a chrome tan leather but it's been oil based so it's gonna have a have a little oil to to the hide probably not the greatest to stick on top of other hides because sometimes the oil will bleed off onto the leather but uh, this usually comes into like a uh, three to four to five six ounce so you're crushing mom says hello what would one oil it with uh, needs foot oil, mink oil, uh, any kind of leather conditioner. Uh, veg tan is probably better with saddle soap, uh, needs foot oil, or mink oil. Any kind of your soft skins, like your deer skin and your elk, that I would use Lexol. It's a Lexol leather conditioner. And you can buy that at like tractor supplies or Walmarts. Uh, the reason why it doesn't, needs foot oil eventually will start taking the top grain off of the leather. The Lexaw doesn't, it conditions it. Good question. Uh, so, 
your oil tan this is great for making bags pouches you can actually cut it into strips and use it for horn straps um but and you can use some of this also to make knife sheaths and stuff because it's been conditioned with oil so that helps it's always not a good thing to store metal objects in leather because leather absorbs absorbs moisture and then it's going to dry it out and it could rust so not a good thing to keep them stored in there for a long time and a lot of times what I do is about every six months I take all my leather goods out and I condition them I put all kinds of leather conditioners on them sit them outside let them dry for the day and then I know they're good to go they're gonna be good so making garments we've got some garments leathers here I've got some garments in behind here I've got some jackets an apron uh, the welding aprons blacksmith aprons great the old tan is great for those um, also you can make them make gun cases out of those and or you can use like a chrome tan uh, softer supple cowhide works well elk or deer any of those anything that's soft and you can line them like I've lined mine with some wool inside here and then just did a little leather lacing with some deer lacing I cut and I showed you guys how to use that lace maker so uh, you can make vest, pants, any of this out of deer, elk. Deer and elk is really good for making garments. Like this is a deer hide right here. You see right here in these drag marks? This is from people dragging out their hides on a four-wheeler and going through thickets. Uh, sometimes you'll see little spots like these here. And that's tick bites that's in the hides all of our hides are wild hides i know this is kind of a gnarly hide i'm showing but just kind of want to give you an idea if you're wanting to make a pair of pants usually it takes like three hides to make a pair of pants making a shirt or a jacket take four to five hides depending on how fancy you want to get with it if you want to do fringe or you need a cape or collars and different things like that um also another thing when you're making garments and all of this is all chrome tan so sometimes very very rarely you might find a person that might it might not go with their skin too well they might have allergic reaction to it but most of the time you're not going to find that I've been making clothes for 20 something years and I've only ran into maybe two people in those those 20 years that that have been uh, that have been allergic to it so you have another question. It says, what is the best leather for moccasins? Most of mine are elk or moose. What does the, exp the expert say? Uh, elk is a little stretchy. It's great for uppers. Uh, the bottoms, I wouldn't go with anything that's going to stretch like that. Because you don't want to have your toes going everywhere and your heels going everywhere. So I would use maybe a buffalo or a thick moose. Um, those don't stretch as bad. But elk does stretch, but it would make a nice top. Now, the thing about hide stretching, I was just getting ready to get into that. When you're making clothes, a lot of times, you don't realize this, but do you see how much stretch I'm getting out of that hide? Now, these hides aren't pre-stretched. So, a trick is, you can put them in a bucket of cold water, get them wet, take them, Tack one side down, find, find you like a four by eight sheet or a, a garage wall and staple this one side down, stretch it while it's wet, stretch it as much as you can, tack it down, do the top and the bottom, let it sit for about two days. That's going to get all your stretch out. Also, you're going to get extra material to be able to use. So that's a deer hide there. Now elk hide most of your elk will come in a garment weight some actually I, sometimes i get mine split into different thicknesses so i have thicker stuff to make moccasins out of and then i've got thinner stuff to make moccasins out of. so same thing with the elk, same thing with the elk. Um, 
you can get stretch. You can stretch it out. See how much stretch you get out of that? You get a lot of extra stretch. And then you don't have to worry about it, uh, it stretching while you're making your clothes and you don't have pucker knees or a baggy booty. So, um, buffalo hide makes great for bags. Depending on the thickness, you can make uh, bags out of it. I've actually had people make coats out of it. Mostly people that live out west in colder, colder climates. But you can use these for, for pouches. Make great pouches. They make, uh, you can use them for moccasins. You're not going to get, see the stretch? You're not going to get the stretch like you do out of the out of the elk. You'll get a little bit. I would go ahead and soak them down and stretch them if, you, if you're going to make a garment. But all of these are chrome tan. These are all commercial hide. Um, chrome tan came in in like 1846. So um, a lot of times in the pre-1800s, 18, 1840s and below, they used uh, vegetable tan, bark tan, and brain tan. And uh, I have a piece of brain tan here. Brain tan, great for anything and everything. I mean, just depending on the thickness you get it, you can make moccasins, you can make clothing, you can make your quivers, um, you can make just about anything out of that. So, and the nice thing about brain tan, it's already got all the stretch out of it. it most of these hides are stretched while they're doing them. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna have to worry about that. And the nice thing, too, about brain tan, it breathes very, very, very good. So if you're making garments, making pants and stuff, that this leather breathes. So you're not going to be so so hot and sweaty as you would in some of your commercial leather. The prices are way different um, because it's all hand done. And this is all done. A lot of it's done by hand, but a lot of it's done but with machines also. Um, and you can... You can uh, it's, it's kind of hard to find some brain tan, but there's still some really good brain tanners out there still doing. And uh, I don't have a piece of bark tan right now to show you, um, but bark tan, it's, it's kind of a, a distressed looking leather. Most people make it out of deer hides, but you can use that as great for shooting bags and pouches. Um, also, like your old tan leather I was showing you, we make these little journals out of those. And then this one here is actually made out of vegetable tan. And you can see how I did a stamp here and did some highlighting. And then I did a dye, and then I did a spray dye over top. So I'll do a class on that sometime and give you guys an idea of how highlighting and, and stamping and tooling. I'll give you a little class on that sometime later. But uh, this is just to give you guys some ideas of what type of leathers to buy. When, uh, I have to laugh, Cody's sneezing. <laughs> but this just gives you an idea of some leathers. So when you're looking for certain, certain things and you're not sure of what to buy, this is going to give you an idea. So you can always come back to my video and get references of what to buy and what to use. Um, I don't, I have some of the, hang on, son. Um, like a, a chrome tan, I also, there's, that we carry in our, in our rolls and bundles, a five, six ounce chrome tan. And, uh, this works good for knife sheets, but like I said, always dip them in some neat spit oil. Um, and you can, and, and it also comes, it's about that thickness, different colors. You can use that for any kind of little possible bags, wallets, pouches, any kind of little small projects. So, um. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of uh, different different leathers that you can use. Uh, possibly this week, maybe next week, I will do a class on tools and what tools to use for different projects. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my class and uh, love you guys. And thank you all for all the goods that you're doing, all the great uh, little projects I've been seeing everybody doing. And if anybody would like to do a seminar, please do. And thank you for everybody from refraining for uh, 
not putting prices on on uh, on your uh, on your site. I appreciate that because uh, just trying to try to keep this group going. I hope it help. It's helping everyone, and I hope everyone's safe and doing great and love you guys and if you have any questions feel free to call me uh, my number's on my website I've been posting every day and um, if you need anything or need any guidance feel free to call me I love you guys and let's keep the fire burning <laughs>